you know, we had a couple of questions about Africa and I, I actually, you know, it looks like you've got some, some efforts there. You know, like, again, we talked about democratizing opportunity. I didn't know too much. I mean, are you guys, it seems like you guys have a big community there or you're working oh, there. What's happening? Oh, oh, there's so much stuff going on in Africa, but uh, we're going to have a special episode of Cardano 360. We call it the Africa special. And hopefully we'll be able to announce that very soon. But we've been running around the continent for a long time. Our biggest office is in Ethiopia and Addis Ababa. And actually, we just partnered with Singularity Net. We're merging our office into theirs, and there's probably going to be like 30 to 50 people that are wow. in that office. And um, we do everything. We're, we're on one side fintech, one side govtech. And then we also think about supply chains and agricultural technology. Uh, and it can be everything from, hey, let's get like land on a ledger because deeds are a huge issue in Africa to voting to, you know, let's uh, identify people. So let's create an identity layer. And then once you have an identity layer, we talk reputation, credit, talk payment systems, all these types of things. Everything in Africa on the governance side is going to be upgraded in the next 10 years across yeah. most mm -hmm. African countries. And it's the fastest growing of all the economies in the world. Africa is like China in the 1980s. Most people from the outside say, why are you in China? Venezuela has a larger economy than China. Come on, it's crazy. But the really clever people who are looking at the social dynamics and seeing the policy changes and so forth said, this is a rocket ship. They're right now loading fuel into it so you don't see it. But I want to be in the ship when it takes off. And then the people who were, they all became billionaires. They did very, very well. If you look at the demographics of Africa, Ethiopia, for example, 70% of the populations at or under the age of 30. Yeah. Most of them are digital natives. And most of them are pro crypto if they've heard about it. And they grew up with a cell phone in their hand. They grew up connected to the internet through some means. And you look at the leadership of Africa, most of the leaders, the old guys, the Joe Biden age, are being replaced with the younger guys who happen to be actually pretty technically savvy. The prime minister of Ethiopia is a cryptographer. He can Get out of here. Wow. He, he, he <laughs> the papers we write. I, I can't do that with Joe. I yeah. can't. I can't go over to White House. Be like, yeah, let's let's talk about perfect forward secrecy. Be like, yeah, Joe. Remember when you played Rainbow Six when you were a kid and you were trying? To, it's like, no, you yeah. can't. Yeah, I mean, I I'm sorry, the mobile rap president. <laughs> yeah, we just can't work with him on that. Um. So anyway, uh, you know, we're really excited about the demographics. We're really excited about how fast the economies were growing pre-COVID. They were growing ten to fifteen percent per year. We think, looking at McKinsey reports and just talking with infrastructure ministers, that we should have about 90% internet coverage across Africa by 2030. And this is a mm -hmm. continent that likes digital currencies. Look at the spread of M-Pesa. They also don't have strong rule of law, so they need something to replace that to improve rule of law. There's a strong demand for anti-corruption and transparency, and there's a strong demand for digital payments and digital currencies. Who do you think wins in that conversation? Blockchain. That's our thing. That's what we've been selling. So when you talk about DeFi, those are the people, that 1.2 billion people. Those are the customers that matter most. And when they grow wealthier and they start mm -hmm. liquefying that $5.5 trillion of wealth that's there, uh, that's the platform that they're going to go do that with. And regulations in those areas are, are aligned for crypto. That's yeah. why we're seeing such strong growth and adoption. And it's good to be there early. So we're all across the continent. We have people in Nigeria. We know people in Kenya. We've been to Rwanda, Uganda. We have a lot of partners like Ice Addis and so forth. And Ethiopia in particular is very special to us. And we've actually closed some deals. So we will announce those and talk about those at the Africa special hopefully soon. I uh, just we don't I don't want to front run that announcement because we have a whole media package and exclusives. Yeah, we had some people in the chat asking about that. Yeah. But it's great. I love working in Africa. It's 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 like the highlight of my career because uh, you're really giving people who have very little not only something, but something to grow from. And then once they have it, they can globalize and they can create wealth and protect the wealth that they have. But also I'm changing America by changing Africa because here's the thing. If they adopt blockchain and our vision and our paradigm as an industry, then wealth goes to the edges. They have strong middle class. The impoverished become wealthier and the countries just run better they have fraud free elections there's guarantees uh, that everything is right and over time 20 years 30 years they become far more competitive than the crook bureaucratic nepotistic american government or the european governments and so forth so the only way america can compete is to become like africa Wow, yeah. what a concept, right? Man. The, the wow. system actually beats it. And so that, that's how we can come back to America and say you should adopt crypto. Otherwise, you're going like, please, 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 Goldman Sachs, please be honest. Please don't speak <laughs> anymore. Please 
Please promote great regulation. You proved yourself in 2009, so I'm yeah. giving you a second chance. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you can be different. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's with yeah. Africa. It's like I, I kind of assimilate it to almost like Tesla with the auto industry of like you know a, a jump in opportunity because there's no technical debt, right? Like not the hundred year old industry that still is technically illegal in some states to sell direct to a consumer. Right. Tesla comes in and blows the whole model up and it's yeah. new technology. I mean, look at, you know, the way that they've been able to do that. It's like Africa to me feels the same way with blockchain of, hey, we're starting here. Yeah. To win the game, you got to change the rules of the game. You can't with this game cannot be won under the existing rule set. The, the, the incumbents are too powerful and they have too many built in advantages. And I think in places like Ghana and Rwanda and Uganda, these are going to be the places that actually lead in the next 10 or 20 years because they can play a completely new game. In fact, our next class we're going to teach people uh, in person for programming when COVID goes away is Ghana. We're going to Accra and I'll go there. It's going to be so much fun. I love the food, love the people, and we'll train an amazing cohort of people. And, you know, I actually might create a, a, you know, a Bitcoin client or something like that with those developers. Be really fun to actually show what you can do once you train people and uh, what they can get. Uh, a lot of our people were actually working in the office in Ethiopia. They We, we started with education. So we partnered with the Ministry of Education and Innovation, and they gave us access to all the universities. We said, give us your best and brightest. We had over 300 people try and compete, female developers, because it was an all-woman's class for our Haskell training class. And it was actually our best class. Our guys went and lived in the country for three months, and uh, we hired, uh, I think, a quarter of the class, and now they're they're part of the programmers and developers in uh, Ethiopia. They're keeping it right up with the ones trained out of Cambridge and Oxford and you know, Harvard yeah. and other places. It's really amazing to see that. That's great human capital, and I cannot wait to see uh, where that goes and what we can build, especially when we talk DeFi, because that is where the DEXs are going to be used. That's where security tokens are going to be used. Think about all the businesses in Ethiopia that are super profitable. They're cash rich, but have no liquidity. They can't securitize because there's no stock market there. Yep, That's going to be a security token play. And then you can go and invest in stuff with 20% returns that you could never find in America, but you can find there. So a lot of direct foreign investment will come in. You know, that, that's going to be the really exciting part of my career, I think, uh, in the mid-2020s. Uh, wow. 